The Seminoles and the Hurricanes intersecting in the tunnel moments ago. Many of these players know each other from high school. Not the old school standoff at midfield, but some mild jawing from the mild underdog Miami Hurricanes intent on making a statement and snapping the 25 game win streak for Florida State. The longest streak since Miami won 34 in a row a dozen years ago. Whatever game you watch today, it was probably cold, maybe even snowy. 75 degrees here in Miami as we go down to the field to Heather Cox. Hi, Heather. What was your message? Handling the emotions of this rivalry. Just go. It's why you're here. Do what you All right, our apologies. Now there's Mike having a problem. Jimbo is sorry to say, just do what we do. Don't get caught up in the emotion. Kirk, for Al Golden, the same message. He knows it's a huge game, but don't make it bigger than it is. Stay grounded, stay focused. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, the team that can contain their emotions early and just try to go out and execute will be the team that has the edge. Remember, Florida State has had some struggles starting out with their best game. I talked to some of the players and coaches on the field before the game. They said, this is our best walkthrough, the best energy that we've had on a game day all year long. We'll see if it pays off for them on the field here in this first quarter. Winston and the Knowles will get the ball to start. Miami won the toss and deferred. So Florida State will receive as we see Al Golden endured torture really a hellish few years with the Hurricanes saddled by sanctions they've come out of that recruiting looks good with a chance to make a real statement and they're still very much in the division race in the ACC they were helped by Duke's loss today to Virginia Tech this feels like the old days this is a rare scene for a hurricane home game in Sun Life Stadium which is sold out tonight Justin Vogel boots it away and it goes through the hands of Jesus Wilson, who will down it in the end zone. The Seminoles season in review. They've gotten to 9 0, but Kirk, it's been a struggle. Tied four times at halftime behind NC State, behind 21 0 to Louisville. Winston having to come on strong after mistake plagued first halves. It's been a different year compared to the dominating Knowles that we saw a year ago, but they lost a lot of leaders who are now starting in the NFL. In fact, eight of them from the team last year. But the thing that is still consistent is Jameis Winston, his leadership, and it, it just a will to find a way to win a football game. I'm interested to see how he and the Knowles play here again early in this emotion in this rivalry game. Carlos Williams, the tailback on the Knowles' first play. Play action. Winston getting pressure off the edge, dumps it down, and the catch is made by the back, and Williams is dragged down behind the line of scrimmage. So Miami's sending folks right at the quarterback's face immediately as we check the Chick fil A impact players. And they're going to try to bring pressure here early. Rashad Green's going to have to have a big night, especially underneath the coverage. Cam Irving, where he mentioned, starting left tackle, goes to center, makes his first start in the center spot. Denzel Perryman, the leader, number 52. Where's the Ray Lewis number? And on the outside, Artie Burns, number one. The Canes are going to have to hold up in some one-on-one -on -one coverage on the perimeter against uh, this Jameis Winston offense. One second and 11. Winston again flips it short. O'Leary, the tight end, makes the catch. Knocked down at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and about six. Uh, anytime you play Jameis Winston, the goal is to get him, or any quarterback for that matter, to third down and then get creative. Remember. He has had a tendency to throw off his back foot on third downs when he feels pressure. This is exactly where the Canes wanted to try to get him, try to get bodies in front of him, try to get him off his spot, see if they can get him to throw the ball into coverage. Miami has been pretty good third down defense. Winston, another throw, high. Over the head of Travis Rudolph, the true freshman wide receiver, well defended by Tracy Howard. Seminoles go three and out. Jameis a little bit frustrated there with the true freshman, Travis Rudolph, a miscommunication. And that's it's all part of what Jimbo Fisher has been dealing with, just settling not just Jameis down, but also the receivers, making the, the adjustments on the sideline. But a three and out for the Canes, which is exactly what they wanted to do. Kaysen Beatty on the punt. And Stacy Coley, who was so productive as a returner and a receiver last year, a bit of a slump this season. 
Coley at the 18. Gets an initial block and picks his way across the 25 yard line. Brad Kaya watched the Seminoles win the BCS title. He's a Southern Californian. Miami was on him early. And now he, a year later, Kirk is playing in this big game in this environment. Yeah, you don't see this very often. You see redshirt freshmen play quarterback, but it's very rare to see a true freshman who is on the field in this kind of game. His emotions, as much as he's played this year, it'll be different tonight. They need to do a good job of getting him to settle down. Duke Johnson is the guy they want to get the football to, but Brad Kaya is going to have to make some throws tonight. And right away, a problem on the offensive line. Seven three. Offense. And it's Trevor Darling, the true freshman, controlling the emotions and the adrenaline. We see plenty of mental mistakes and flags typically when these teams get together. No doubt about it. It's called proud to the snap. Therefore, there is no delay of game. Timeout on the field. Okay, so a timeout by Miami before their first offensive play. A timeout? He's talking about delay of game. I'm thinking about the right, right tackle there. The freshman Darling moved. But the Canes get a, a timeout there, and Al Golden has a little laugh here, trying to get these guys to settle down. Talked about the series history. Miami leads at all time, 31-27, but the Knowles have been catching up rapidly. 21 times they've met with at least one team in the top five, eight combined national titles. Knowles have won seven of the last nine, and they've won the last four by an average margin of 18 points. Kaya in third grade the last time Miami beat FSU in a home game and it wasn't in this building it was in the old Orange Bowl. Canes have been pretty tough to beat in this place you wouldn't think about this as a as a big home field advantage Kirk with 13 out of 14 here. That's impressive and I, and I think for them to be able to get into this game a game that uh, the odds makers feel they should be very competitive anytime you're an underdog you want to have success early. Play action. Kaya looks over the middle on first down, has a man complete. Out near midfield is the top receiver. Walford loses the ball. The tight end dropped it, and Florida State picks it up. Tyler Hunter on the recovery after a completion to the top pass catcher on Miami. A couple things. Number one, the Canes are going to try to attack the middle of the interior of the Canes or the Knowles defense, and that's exactly what they did with their best target, Walford. But how about Jalen Ramsey ripping this ball out? not giving up on the play and right before he goes down he gets the football out it's a loose ball Hunter jumps on top of it but it was Jalen Ramsey the leader of the defense that makes the play. Knowles got out to a slow start this year with take base they've been on fire in the last five games. It's been a big part of their success as the offense has turned it over early. So the first running play of the night for Florida State it's Carlos Williams straight ahead. They're getting healthier at tailback. We'll see Williams rotate with Dalvin Cook the Miami native and Mario Pender tonight who's back. And, and remember that not just with the backs Chris but the adjustments up front Ryan Holfield who has been in for Barron is out of the game the left tackle one of the best in the country Cameron Irving left tackle to center which puts the true freshman Roderick Johnson in at left tackle. So what kind of push will they get in an offense that struggled to establish the run. Winston throws it far side. That's Rudolph. Dragged down at the 42. It'll be third and short for Florida State. Thinking about similar environment at Clemson last year. The place was all hyped up in Death Valley. An early turnover by the Tigers. And Florida State cashed it in, and the crowd got very quiet. And the avalanche began for the Knowles. We'll see if they can catch this fumble. They need three. Winston well protected incomplete over the middle once again excellent coverage there Antonio Crawford one of the corners they rotate rotate in there broke it up. Well that is a great play and you can see Jimbo talking to the officials wondering if Crawford got in there a little bit early but the junior out of Tampa does a nice job of keeping his body off of the receiver and gets the right hand in there to knock it away. It's the second time that we've seen Jameis Winston look up to Rudolph on third down to try to come up with a conversion and both times it's failed. Knowles punting again the first six plays five of them passes. Very high and short punt taken at the 17 yard line. So Miami's defense rises up. 
doesn't let Florida State cash in the fumble recovery at midfield in the points. Duke Johnson having a big junior year. In about two and a half years, he has the school's all-time all-purpose yardage record. And he's tracking down O.J. Anderson, the former Super Bowl MVP, needs 251 to have the school all-time rushing record. I mean, think about some of the running backs that have come through this university in the last 10 or 15 years, let alone the last 25 or 30. And he's second on that list. Yeah, Kirk, this year, he's passed Edron James, Portis, Gore, McGahee all this year. Impressive. I Smith. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Anderson said, I'm sorry, Chris, the last three weeks averaging 196 yards a game. And Johnson's first carry of the night cuts it back. Terrence Smith dropped him for about two yards. You talk about the tailback history. He was 15th on the list at the beginning of the year, zoomed up to number two. Look at the Frank <laughs> yeah. Gore at the bottom. Willis McGahee, James, Quentin Portis. You, you mentioned them all. Adrian James, it's unbelievable. What a back. And you mentioned earlier, broke his ankle early in last year's loss to Florida State hasn't talked a lot about it but he is eager to have a big night I'm thinking about it since that tough evening in Tallahassee a year ago with the true freshman this is where he's improved the most recognition seeing well schooled this week makes the adjustment at the line of scrimmage Johnson again on second and eight cuts it back and darts down across the 26 yard line it'll be third and short Northrop on the stop. Chick-fil-A impact players on this side. Yeah, Philip Dorsett's going to have to make some outs, make some plays on the perimeter, one-on-one. -on -one. Already the Knowles crowding line of scrimmage. You already saw Wolford make a play over the middle. That's an area that they're going to try to attack against Florida State. Mario Edwards coming off his best game of his career last week against Virginia. Made a lot of plays, and Jalen Ramsey already forced that fumble. Obviously, it's already had an impact on the game. Need a yard on third down. Miami has really been poor on third down conversions this year even on third and short it's been far from automatic with Johnson back there they hand it to him he does get a first down it wasn't easy but that'll be a relief to move the sticks and you see some tempers again uh, they, they got a good push he doesn't have a lead back and this is a very talented front from Florida State if you're asking to try to come up with a yard and a half, you can see Demarcus Walker got a pretty good push there and pushed the freshman Darling into the backfield, but still the Canes come up with a first down. Brad Kaya, a lot of times, will look over to James Coley to get confirmation, like we see in college football all the time. And sometimes, depending on the coverage, he'll either get the confirmation to go with the play or make an audible at the line of scrimmage. Kaya, a first down throw. Looks far side, has a man wide open, and he overthrew Stacy Coley, who had nothing but grass in front of him. An early opportunity missed by the freshman. Well, th this is what they want to try to do is try to get the receivers to try to create some confusion at the top. And they just come through here. And also, the, having three receivers aligned here created a little bit of confusion. And the Knowles are going to have to get on the same page. You can see two of them ran into one another. But still, I'm not sure they were on the same page as far as the coverage. That's been a problem for them all year long. And that time, Brad Kaya, the freshman, missed a big opportunity. You can understand it, Kirk. He keyed up young guy, a little too much adrenaline in that throw. Play clock at one when he snaps it. Johnson hit in the backfield. Escapes, but has to work hard just to get back to the line of scrimmage. P.J. Williams, the corner, came flying in quickly. P.J. Williams, you're going to see this. Chris, you even brought this up one time to Charles Kelly, defensive coordinator. They get you into the boundary. You're going to see P.J. Williams a lot of times coming on the corner blitz. They're aggressive. They attack. And Duke Johnson, one thing he's going to have to be able to do is be able to shake some defenders because early in the game, they want to make Brad Kaya have to beat them. And they're really selling out against the run and Duke Johnson. There's the look over to James Coley, the offensive coordinator, and the backup quarterbacks to get the play that he needs. On third and ten, Kaya steps up again. Over the middle, has a catch. It's Philip Dorsett deep in Florida State territory. Beautiful throw by the young quarterback. 
if two safeties back, you've got to be able to split them, and he's going to just go right here and split the two safeties. But the quarterback's got to put this ball on a rope. He can't hang it up too much. He goes right over Nate Andrews between the two safeties. A nice touch, puts it right where Dorsett can make the catch and then get down and protect himself. Third and ten. What a throw from the freshman. 36 yards. Johnson is spelled as Joe Yearby, the true freshman from Miami Central. He's in the ball game number two. Play clock again winding down and snap it at one. And this is Yearby with his first carry. 192 pounder who is a high school teammate of Dalvin Cook, who's on the Florida State side tonight. Good backfield in yeah, high school. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we a lot of times want to talk about Florida State's backs with Carlos Williams, Dalvin Cook, and Mario Pender, but. The Miami Hurricanes and Al Golden have done a very nice job of building a great group, a great stable. Duke Johnson gets all the attention, but Gus Edwards is more the power back, and Yearby now who comes in is a lot like Duke Johnson. And coaches have told us this week that he's helped Gus, uh, helped Duke Johnson by pushing him to continue to make him the, even a better back because of the competition. Yearby, who averages six and a half yards a carry, not bad for a, a second option. Sets up a third and two. They'll get Duke Johnson back into the game. You know, Duke, Chris, you mentioned he got hurt in this game. They told us he was about 180 pounds last year when they played Florida State, whereas now he's about a 202 pounds. So he's put on over 20 pounds and, and is really a different kind of back where last year he wanted to bounce everything to the outside because of the weight, because of the physicality. Now you're going to see him kind of lower his shoulder and run it in there. Here's another third down to see if he can come up with these yards to pick up a first down. Ninth play of the drive. Johnson in the eye formation. They fake it to him. Kaya loops it downfield. Dorset touchdown Miami. What a drive and what a start for 19 year old Brad Kaya. Acts like he expected it. No doubt about it. Michael Badgley is a true freshman kicker who's taken over midseason for Miami. 83 yards and nine plays Dorsett on the receiving end. Third and short they're expecting the run and there is a great job of using the tight end Walford to take away the safety and open up the middle of the field. They needed time to be able to make the throw with the execution and the guts to call it by James Coley exceptional. The Canes jump out here early. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. And Dawn of the Planet of the Apes on Digital HD today. Two pinpoint throws, both on third down from Brad Kaya to Philip Dorsett in Miami. Strikes first. Dorsett, a speedster. You can be skeptical, but he has been clocked at 4.21 in the 40 yard dash. Very quiet the last couple of games, Kirk. He only had 22 receiving yards. They ran the ball in the big wins over Virginia Tech and Carolina, but what a start for him tonight here. Two catches already. Ball taken by Whitfield. Straight up the middle, but not much past the 20 yard line talked about Miami needing big plays this is third and two and here's Walford to tight end he's going to take Hunter this this safety right here and this creates the one on one opportunity on the outside which Dorsett ends up winning the linebackers right here they're lost right here lost in coverage because they're anticipating run opens up the middle and there is the throw by Brad Kaya that Chris talked about that's the area that's given the Florida State defense the most problems and that's exactly where the Canes are trying to attack. 
It's become a familiar position for Florida State in an early hole as they hand the ball off to Mario Pender, knocked down immediately by Denzel Perryman, the senior leader of the defense. It's been a long time since we've seen Mario Pender run the football, but he is facing a very tough front seven. Look at the effort there by Denzel the Perryman. Yeah, no question about that. Left arm just pulled him down. This is a dude that squats 605 pounds. That is really strong. On second and nine, Winston flips it short. It's Williams in traffic. Not much room. Wrapped up by a swarm of Canes, including Jermaine Grace, the linebacker. And he read that the entire time. Jermaine Grace has a huge future, only a sophomore. They say he's a linebacker that can run 4-4-5. Four, four, Talk about speed. That time, it was all about his instincts. He read the play perfectly, put himself in a position. The lineman on the screen didn't have a chance because of the instincts of the linebacker there. Here comes the noise on third and nine. He sees man free across the board here. Remember, two third downs, two three and outs so far for the Knowles. Winston bobbles the snap. But picks it up and stays alive on the run flips it over the middle and O'Leary makes the catch now they say incomplete Winston avoided a disastrous play showed good poise but O'Leary couldn't come up with it and it's a third three and out well, you want to look at Irving and think well remember he's starting for the first time he's the left tackle playing at center but the snaps actually pretty good it's a little bit low but something he should handle right there kind of an awkward step there by Jameis does a good job of keeping it alive and now just tries to make something happen you see Chad Thomas lower the boom another freshman O'Leary had that ball sure in did. his normally reliable hands. Couldn't hold it. Three possessions and three three and outs for the Knowles. Jason Beatty has been busy here in the first quarter. Coley, a late fair catch at the 28 yard line. Miami's defense has been strong tonight. 14 total yards for Florida State. Gains up 7 zip. Above a sold out Sun Life Stadium, the aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Whether you're going for it from a few yards out or from miles away, go with a tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Miami drove the length of the field, an impressive possession. Brad Kaya, the freshman quarterback, now they have it back up seven. Amazingly poised student of the game, this freshman quarterback. Checks to a pass play, flips it short. And this is Coley with running room. Stacey Coley out near midfield, ran through an arm tackle, and the Canes are threatening again. Love to see the unselfish attitude of these receivers. Malcolm Lewis, I love the play call. The adjustment by the freshman. They get the ball out there where you have some room to run for Coley. But look at the effort there by Malcolm Lewis trying to pick up a block and give his fellow receiver a little bit more room to run. Kirk, they've already gained 20 plus yards on four plays tonight. First 10 minutes of the game. And first and 10 becoming a big play action down for them where they're getting Florida State anticipating a run with Duke Johnson. Another first down throw over the middle. It's wide open. It's the tight end this time. Walford holds onto the ball, takes it to the 27. Nice side adjust here. You have motion and confusion again. Jalen Ramsey will come right here. He starts to cheat down and he's going to come on the blitz. Watch how he starts to come down. When he comes down, the quarterback sees that potential. It's a threat. They get the ball out of his hands. No one's there to pick up the tight end, who's the best receiver, arguably, on this Miami Hurricane roster. Jalen Ramsey blitzes. Kaya sees it, gets the ball out of his hands quickly. And James Coley calling the play as an old friend of Jimbo Fisher's. They were on Nick Saban's staff at LSU. And of course, Coley worked in Tallahassee under Fisher. I have back again. Near sideline. Dorsett goes for it. Out of bounds. Incomplete. It was a jump ball. Darby defending. He could not come down. At least that's the ruling here. Another he, look. Yeah, he goes up in the air. Looks like Darby gets his right hand in there, and well, by now he's out of bounds. But 
puts that ball where his receiver has a chance. Was Darby there early on the receiver? Uh, and super slow mo he was, but they both went up. I, don't th I think that's a, a good no call in my opinion. But I love again Miami's attacking. They're going downfield. You're going to leave your corners one on one. We've got receivers at Dorsett, Waters, Coley to try to make you pay for that. Not to mention the tight end Walford. Many of Seminole fans here, you can hear the the Ward chant. In second and ten, carry straight ahead for Johnson. A balanced approach tonight, which is what you need when you go up against the speed and athletic ability of the Florida State defense. 14 plays. Seven runs, seven passes so far for James Coley with his young freshman taking some of the heat off of him. It's a true freshman. The guy's playing high school football last year. I know California plays great high school football. He's playing the defending champs and looking like right now, early in this game, like he's just out at a Wednesday the practice. On his face I mean, he is chill. They've had good success on third down tonight, which is bucked to trend this year. Play clock running down. Kaya spots it and calls a timeout with two seconds left on the clock. So he'll talk about it with Coley. Can the Canes convert? Brad Kaya, interesting story. Grew up in a show business family. His mom was an actress. At 19 years old, she played the role of Felicia in the movie Friday. Yeah. Working with Ice Cube. Yeah. A famous role. Then she went and did some stand up comedy. Dad was a screenwriter. How does he fit in on the, the true uh, freshman? Fitting? I mean, Deshaun Watson fit injured. Kyle Allen's just been getting an opportunity here recently for AM. Treon Harris, same thing in Florida. But Brad Kaya started opening night, Labor Day night. He's playing against Louisville on the road. Papa John Stadium couldn't hear himself think as a true freshman and he has really come a long way with a lot of game reps to allow the game to slow down a bit and let him play with the composure that you're seeing tonight. Walford the tight end in the near slot on third and six. Kaya looks the other way complete first down running free as Dorsett getting blocks banging off a defender to the five yard line first and goal. Nice job of getting the ball out again, Chris, on third down. And I'm telling you, Dorsett can run. He knows a lot of these guys on this team from Florida State. He's waited for an opportunity to be healthy, to be able to play him out in space. He's running away from P.J. Williams, who finally catches up to him and lowers the boom right there with his shoulder. But he ran away from him enough to get the first down and the ball down to the five-yard line. Dorsett can run. Understatement. <laughs> yeah, of course. He's one of the fastest receivers in the country. These playmakers on the edge have waited for a night like this in a big stage. And first and goal. Kaya's going to throw it again. Loops for the end zone. High throw. Jump ball. Off the hands of Dorsett. Almost at his second touchdown. That is a good ball and another great call by James Coley. Why wait till third down to throw down there? If you're going to throw it, take a shot on first and 10. Dorsett goes up. He's in great position. Now, it would have been a heroic catch. But that ball, the placement of that ball is exactly where it needs to be in man-to-man -man coverage. Away from the defender, up high where Dorsett can go up and make a play on it. Almost came down with another touchdown. Second to go, Johnson hammers forward down near the goal line. It's not been easy for Miami, Kirk. They have not been a great goal-to-go -go offense. They haven't always punched it in, but now they're very close on third down. A lot of the numbers when you look at the entire year have to do with playing with a true freshman quarterback and how the, the, the windows are a lot tighter. The decisions have to be quicker. I think the, the offense today versus who they were their first maybe five or six weeks of the season. It's very very different with the growth that Kai has made. This offensive lines off to a heck of a start for Miami as well. Well they run left behind big number 74 Eric Flowers. The senior is their best lineman. Well, they go right. Johnson bounces it. Fight to the corner. Touchdown, Canes. Yes, Blaze is going crazy. Are we in the old horseshoe in Little Havana? <laughs> it feels like it right now. 
Well, the Canes have come ready to go here early, and Florida State finds themselves yet again in that familiar role where they dig themselves a hole. Philip Dorsett making all these plays, catching the football. Oh, it's blocked. Badgley's extra point was blocked as it looks like Jalen Ramsey may have gotten in there. Yep. But Chris, Philip Dorsett, the receiver making all these plays, this time does a nice job at the far right, the bottom of the screen. Watch him set the edge and seal it. A good job of bouncing it, but there's the edge right there from Dorsett to allow him get to allowing Duke Johnson to get to the corner. But it was the instincts and the vision, of course, of Duke Johnson to get that ball to the outside in a hurry to give himself a chance. Al Golden loves it. Ninth straight game. Johnson scored a touchdown set up by Dorsett's big play. Miami now five of five on third down. Five of five on third down against this Knowles defense. And I'm going to say it right now. It's a 60 minute game. Yep. It's a 60 minute game. Good news for Florida State is that they have about 46 and a half minutes to dig out of this hole. Winston has been at his best when trailing. Hasn't been seminal mistakes that have put him in trouble here, but they don't have a first down yet, and they're down 13 nothing. I purposely went to the Florida State Louisville game on a Thursday night just to watch the game. I didn't have to work that night. Because you're I, hardcore. Hardcore, and I stood on the sideline of Florida State to watch them, and they dug themselves a hole, and it was interesting to watch their body language and their facial expressions. Nobody ever panicked. Nobody ever got upset with one another. They made adjustments, played a lot harder in the second half, and they were able to come out of there with a win. We'll see if they do it tonight. Jesus Bobo Wilson takes a shot, loses the ball. Turnover, Miami's got it. And Golden out on the field, jumping on his guys. Dion Bush lowered the boom. Wow, a big hit there by Bush, Chris. And I think Corn Elder jumped on top of it. Big hit right here coming from the left. Deion Bush, a starting safety, covering kickoffs. There's 29, a backup corner. Corn Elder out of Nashville makes a heads up play to be able to come up with a ball. You talk about a collision. Deion Bush is known for his physicality as a safety, and this time. He takes out Bobo Wilson on a kickoff coverage, and there's Corn Elder jumping on top of the football, and the Canes are in business again. Johnson, the first down carry, trying to get the outside, a stiff arm, but he's shoved down by Williams after about a three, four yard gain. I thought the way this game is going, there's Deion Bush. One of the leaders had a heck of a freshman year. I remember calling this game when EJ Manuel was part of the Knowles and, and Bush looked like one of the old school Miami Hurricane defensive backs as a freshman. Last year had to deal with a sports hernia. Wasn't able to play as much. This year he's back second on the team in tackles, being a leader and inspiring this team. Comes up with a big play here on special teams. Yearby in to spell Johnson. He cannot escape. Drag down, so it'll be third and medium. More Miami trying to cash in this fumble. Steelers and Titans, 8:15 Eastern time. Kirk, will you be in the ballpark? Uh, I will be there. See if the Titans can win a ball game. At this point, I don't know. Maybe they're starting to think about the draft. The way they've been looking here the last five or six weeks. But I'll be there. I'll be there courtside. Thinking about the draft, huh? Third down. Five of five. Big tight end. That's the target usually on third down. Mike Walford to the right of the formation. And they moved, moved a safety on top of Dorsett. They snap it at two. They throw it near side. A flag is down. Coley makes the catch. He stopped right at the marker by Darby, but we'll check the penalty. It's like a false start against Miami. They had maybe too many men in the backfield. Ron Cherry, the ACC referee tonight. Illegal formation. We have five men in the backfield on the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. So Good either. So so on on third down, the Knowles were bailing. And again, they're disguising coverage. They're still they're still they're still trying to affect Brad Kaya in his eyes. Even though he's played well tonight, they're showing one thing and going to another. And that time they bailed. And if it weren't for that illegal formation, that's another first down on a third down play. 
Second quarter will start with Miami at third and 11. End of the first quarter in Miami. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Apathy is what Miami is often known for. Even the students don't come out often, but they are here in force tonight. It's a party over there. The Ibis is, I mean, just spraying around the smoke. Just pulling up to the stadium. It felt like the old Orange Bowl. It did. Electric congested. Kaya rolls around, throws it low. Nothing there for him on third and 11. Yeah. And you know what? That's a great decision for, for Brad Kaya there. Tried to roll away, tried to buy a little bit of time there for, for his receivers to break away. Nobody did. He just fires it into the ground, makes a good decision. And we'll see if the Canes can convert the fumble recovery into points. Matt Gudis was their starting kicker, injured out for the year. So Michael Badgley, freshman, true freshman from Summit, New Jersey. Golden calls him Jersey Mike. Seven of eight, but his longest so far is 42. This would be from 45. Just had the extra point blocks. Little trouble on the snap. Pretty good job by the holder, Dallas Crawford, to get it down. And Miami stretches the lead to 16 nothing. Brock Berlin was the hero the last time Miami beat Florida State at home. Brock Berlin, the quarterback. Sonoris Moss, the Moss family had some big plays against. Chris Ricks fumbled the ball in overtime. Gore with the winning touchdown. Oh man. It's been that long. Yeah. Kaya, as we said earlier, in third grade when that happened. Right. And Kirk, you mentioned it, how well they played when under pressure went behind in these games. Yeah, they, they have had moments where it looked like it might be the end. Look at this 17 10 without Jameis Winston found a way to win an overtime in the middle there. NC State it couldn't have gone any worse. And they came back to win that one of course Notre Dame and then Louisville on the road. They're down 21 to nothing. They have a heart of a champion. They, they tend to maintain their poise not get discouraged. We've talked about it all season long with this group. But this is Miami. It's a rivalry game. They better wake up. That was their worst first quarter. Of all the games that we just showed you, that was their worst first quarter they played this year. Had a 14 yards of offense. They didn't have a first down in the first quarter. Worst quarter period. How could you play a worst quarter? Whitfield trying to ignite Florida State. Has a gap. Breaks a tackle. Wrestled down at the 32. Third down's been a nightmare. It's usually been third and long for Winston. It sure has, and they've, they've mixed up their looks. He was frustrated there with Rudolph doing a good job with their coverage. That was a heck of a play by Crawford. A decent snap that Jameis could not hold on to. He tried to keep the play alive. Nick O'Leary unable to hold on to it. But again, first three series they've had three and out, three and out, three and out. But remember, at the flip of a switch, you don't know when it's going to happen. The Knolls typically start to execute and start to look like a different team. First down throw. Winston over the middle and over the head of Jesus Wilson. That middle drive again took over in Miami territory at the 49 and went three and out. Heather. Well guys a quick reminder Jameis Winston did tweak his right ankle against Louisville two games ago then he got hit eight times way above average last week against Virginia. He is still battling swelling in that right ankle receives treatment daily heavily taped tonight. He did practice all week but when he wasn't practicing he was wearing a protective walking boot something to keep an eye on. Winston four of eight has had no downfield completions and now almost throws a pick. Wow. Raphael Kirby the linebacker was right there. He does a nice job. Johnson does a nice job here of sitting back into coverage right back in here. 
And Jameis Winston just does not do a very good job of being able to feel this. Right here, he thinks he's going to stay here. And just at the last second, he slides over. Watch this, how he slides over. I think Jameis was anticipating him staying in the middle on the inside receiver, but he followed the eyes. Kirby does a nice job of reading the eyes, which brought him off of the inside receiver and to the outside and right in position for the interception. Wilson had to break that play up, or it would have been a pick for the linebacker. Another third and long. Fires over the middle, a catch made by Wilson, who stays on his feet. Great balance and is into Miami territory, so they finally convert with a big play. And what a gutsy throw. It's going to come across the middle here. Watch the anticipation right here. He's going to throw that football right into that window. Make a great throw by Jameis there to get the first down. First down, they throw it short. And knocked down immediately is Dalvin Cook, a freshman from here in Miami. Some, you know, for any offense, you're you're three and out, you're three and out, you're three and out. You're facing another third and long. You come up with a conversion. Sometimes it's just that throw, that play, that can create a little bit of momentum and some confidence for an offense. Remember, reshuffled offensive line with Cam Irving in there from left tackle in its center, making his first start in the middle. Second down handoff to Cook who breaks free. Tremendous speed. Cuts it back and is gone. We've watched these guys play before. At the flip of a switch, it happens like that. And, and this is what they needed. A big conversion on third down. Gets the nice push there. What a good job of coming out of that arm tackle by Dalvin Cook. It looked to me like Raphael Kirby, the outside linebacker, was there to make the play for a short gain, but he pulls out of it. Remember, Cook was somewhat questionable coming into this week with a hip injury from last week, but it's shown that he's plenty healthy, pulls out of that arm tackle, and an old just like that get on the board. Aguayo makes it 16-7. Remember that Kirby had a chance to make a pick and really put the Knowles on a hold. Couldn't make the catch. Big conversion on third and ten, and the touchdown run by Cook. Knowles are coming back. And welcome back to this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Florida State, which has already clinched the ACC Atlantic Division by virtue of Clemson's loss at Georgia Tech, thinking obviously about bigger things than just the division title. Quick counter strike by the Seminoles, just a minute 17 to cover 69 yards in five plays. Deep boot by Aguayo. To Chris Felica, Miami graduate, the Bear with their Affleck trivia question. Chris. Hello, guys. It's time for tonight's Affleck trivia question. In its history, Miami has one win. An unranked Miami has one win over a, a top 10 Florida State team. Who was Miami's starting quarterback that night? Oh, a little, little, that night. Or nope. that day, that game. That game. <laughs> no, no other hint? You're looking for any hints you can get yeah, to answer yeah, these I mean, questions. <laughs> was I alive, Bear? Yes, you were. <laughs> They haven't been playing that long. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> they really play, what, 51 times or something? Yeah, exactly. Here's a handoff. This is Stacy Coley on the jet sweep. Chris Felica, by the way, was a student assistant, University of Miami Sports Information Department, Come class on, of 94. He, he has his championship ring. There he comes. Wow, that's a that, that's a horrific look right there back in 1990. I don't think so. Hey, you look great. <laughs> Very serious Kidding minded. Me? Exactly. Student of the game. Freshman then. year. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot of hair ago. Uh, down from New York, ready to be a cane. How will the canes respond after Florida State's quick touchdown? Short game for Johnson. It'll be third in a yard. The the, the Florida State team and that will to win we talked about by the way when it was 16 to nothing that this team just never gives up never gets frustrated the defense even though they've given up big plays and they've helped dig themselves a hole this season as a team we always talk about Jameis Winston in the offense in the second half you and I talked about this on game day this morning they 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 flip a switch themselves yeah. and they become a different unit as well and play at a much dif different level when they get on the same page. They've been struggling tonight defending this third this team on third down. They're five. Of Kaya's got to hurry. 
Snaps it at two. Johnson, first down. Smashes out near the 40. So the Canes have made it six of seven on third down conversions tonight. Fair, you have the answer for us. We, I think we give up. I will answer tonight's athletic trivia question for you. The year was 1980. The quarterback was Jim Kelly. Oh. Oh. Miami won 10-9 that day. 1980. Unranked Miami. I always associate Jim Kelly with championships. And courage now. Jim Kelly battling yeah. cancer delivered a few encouraging words to the crowd here at the Carolina game two weeks ago. Absolutely. Felt this was the year that Miami would turn it around. Kaya again over the middle. Has the tight end Walford running free. All the way to the end zone. And Miami answers. yards with a talented tight end the top receiver on this team that is how you answer a scoring drive by an undefeated rival exactly right they brought a blitz with Reggie Northrup right up the middle they get one on one right here to the inside on a slot they go after Chris Kasher who's 6'4 250 there's no way he can stay with a tight end outstanding job with the offensive line and giving Kaya the time to make the throw man to man and the tight end wins another battle. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Always one of a kind. Buick. Five expectation shattering models. Another reason to experience the new Buick. And Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken. Just the chicken sandwich. Brad Kaya tearing through Florida State secondary. Seven completions so far for the true freshman. They've averaged 30 yards per completion 211 passing yards Vogel boots it deep in the end zone Go back to this touchdown mentioned Florida State brought a blitz here with a middle linebacker you have one on one matchups out on the outside. And the matchup that he's looking to expose is right here with a little move to the outside and up and against the tight end Walford his best receiver against a big outside linebacker at Chris Casher he's 6 4 250 he can't stay with him and look at the effort at the end there what a heck of a block by Walter Tucker and there's a frustrated defensive coordinator and Charles Kelly and a happy quarterback young quarterback at Brad Kaya big sophomore fullback chuck down there to clean out P.J. Williams. Winston first down throw over the head of Travis Rudolph into double coverage Heather Cox is on the sidelines on the far side. What are you sensing from the Seminoles now back down 16. Well Chris they are they are quiet they are stunned it's interesting everybody's sitting down kind of shaking their heads looking over at one another but again this is a situation that they've been in before four times at halftime they have been down so this is a team that knows it knows how to fight back and it shows right now I think and they sure know how to fight back but you saw Charles Kelly the defensive coordinator very concerned by what's happened here so far Winston fires complete finds finally his top receiver Rashad Green. ACC's leader in yards and receptions. First time we've called his name tonight. Offensive line doing a really good job there, giving Winston enough time. Play took a while to develop. You'll notice Jameis Winston anticipates quite a bit. And some of the times he throws his interceptions is where he and his receiver aren't on the same page because he throws the ball early and they don't go to the spot he's anticipating. This is the speedy cook who had the 44 yard touchdown run, pulled down after a seven yard game. But with Green, a receiver he's been playing with now for the last couple of years, that rarely happens. Typically, you'll see that with some of the younger freshmen, Travis Rudolph, even Bobo Wilson, 
Armand Lane guys he's still trying to build that chemistry with but he has it obviously with his main man Rashad Green. He's made a catch now in 39 consecutive games for the Knowles. Cook has first down yardage at the 48. Earlier, Nick O'Leary had his 100th career reception. So, a couple of milestones for the Knowles receivers in the early going. It seems like that Seminoles defense has been out there the entire first half. Important, I think, not just to move the ball for Jameis Winston, but Jimbo Fisher maybe thinking about let's milk this clock a little bit. Play action on first down. Winston chased but delivers complete. Ermin Lane, the freshman, breaks free. Ermin Lane down inside the 30 with his first catch of the night. But Jameis Winston just does not look like the same Winston. See how he's he's really hampered to try to break contain to get outside. But this is the freshman receiver that's been coming on. We've known about Rudolph for most of the year. But Lane, 6'3, 206 pounds, who's from this area. You know he is fired up tonight to have a chance to play the hometown Canes. He's really been coming on from the Louisville game on. Now he's from Homestead, so you know he's got friends and family here. As so many of the players do. Nowhere to run. Right into traffic on the right side. Calvin Aquetalu made the stop for Miami. Ford Echo Boost 400 down here in South Florida, 1 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN, about 40 miles away tomorrow afternoon. Everything building to this, the NASCAR season. You're going to stick around for the race? You, you got stuff that you got to go to the NFL game tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You going to stick around? Let me go to the beach. <laughs> what a shot. Second and 10. Winston well protected flips it short. This is green. Knocked down to the 25. It'll be third and five. Kirby on the tackle. It's good leverage on the football. You don't want to give Rashad Green a whole lot of wiggle room because he can make a guy miss and pick up yards in a hurry. That time there were a lot of Kane's defenders surrounding him and keeping him well short of that first down. Let's see if they bring pressure here on third down on Winston. Their goal was to mix up the looks, bring pressure, show pressure, bail, try to confuse him and the offensive line and the receivers as much as they can. Haynes with that speed rush package in the game. Trying to get a lot of pass rushers. They blitz up the middle, but it's picked up. And Winston fires for the end zone, but way over the head of Green. It was well covered anyway. Fourth down. They brought pressure, but for the most part, it was handled up front. I've been really, I'm, I know this isn't going well for them, but you got to be impressed with how they're holding up up front. I mean, it, he didn't have to throw that ball as quickly as he did, and I'm sure that's what Jimbo Fisher's talking to him about. He really didn't, he didn't give Rashad Green much of a chance at all. He had coverage underneath and behind. Really no chance at all to be able to hit that on third down. Harriman, the linebacker, came flying for, but he, you said good job picking him up. So Aguayo never missed in the state of Florida. He's only missed twice in his career. Right down the middle, as almost all of his field goals are. From 43 yards out, Seminoles cut the lead to 13. And some jawing going on. You expect that when the Seminoles and the Canes get together. Is is Georgia in the top here? Robert, thank you, boy. In the Pac-12, the South has gone to the home campus of the North team and won time and again. Arizona winning at Oregon, Utah with the road win. Wild drives another kickoff deep. Coley will take a knee. Brad Kaya has had his way tonight against his Florida State defense in the first half. Here's a third and short, anticipating a run by Duke Johnson. They go play action. They use their big tight end as a decoy, opens up the middle of the field for a touchdown. Here's man to man. This time they don't use Walford as a decoy. He gets a matchup, a favorable matchup against Chris Casher. He's able to get separation, pulls away from him. It's almost like James Coley is a step ahead as a play caller with Kaya from what Charles Kelly's trying to do with this Florida State defense. And we talked in the open about the middle of the field 
being open, not just tonight, but all year with new linebackers, some new safeties. And that's exactly what James Coley has studied, and that's what they're trying to expose. And they've done a very good job of doing that here in his first half. Johnson, that's one of his longest runs tonight, picks up nine on first down. Northrop tackled him. It's been a quiet night so far for Duke Johnson, mainly, Chris, because Brad Kaya and these receivers, which we talked this morning, even on game day, if they were going to win this game, Kaya and the receivers are going to have to make plays against man to man coverage, which they've done. And once you start to do that, you can get back eventually to running the football with Duke Johnson. So they've been throwing to set up the run instead of running to set up the throw. There's a second down throw. Kaya flips it, inaccurate pass for Johnson. Golden said that he knows eventually when it comes down to it they're going to have to run the ball successfully to win this game. It's what teams have not been able to do in the second half against the Noles when trying to protect the lead. You're right. When, when do you and again the score will fluctuate but when do you stop being aggressive with these first and ten play action calls and start to work a little clock and run the ball. Now that's down the road in the second half. We still have a long way to go until you start to think about that. Again, that adjustment, getting the confirmation, making the audible. Went from under center with a shotgun on third and one. Johnson has it, and they find a crease. So, excellent read, Coley communicating to the quarterback where to call the run play. Yeah, and uh, just this offensive line, Eric Flowers was questionable coming in this week. 74, the left tackle. Watch him help out, clearing out this hole. The entire left side that time. It's the strength of this uh, this offensive line tonight. You know, they have had eight. Different offensive line starting lineups coming into tonight's game because of the various injuries that they've had to deal with. Some pretty good continuity so far from the Canes. Flowers is a tough guy. Sure is. He hit it, tore his meniscus. He had surgery three weeks ago and guaranteed he'd be back for this game. He told the coaches, there's no way I'm missing this game. Forget about that. And he, he is a fast healer and he's, he's a very pain tolerant guy, that left tackle. No doubt about it. You can see the experience that he brings to the table. Feliciano also 43rd start now he's played over at right tackle he's played left tackle tonight he's at left guard to help out with Eddie Goldman on the inside McDermott's been around for a long time one of the leaders of this entire offense but these, these guys are off to a very very good start against a formidable defensive line of Florida State you'll be back in the ball game. And they hand it to him. Hammered hard at the edge. Northrop stopped him. It'll be third and three. A lot of success running and throwing on third down. This just has not been anywhere close to the Knowles defense all year long that we saw last year in third down. They are having so much trouble getting off the field. Even an offense like this that's really struggled on third down, having great success tonight. Kaya fires. Catch made. Tackled right at the marker is Malcolm Lewis by Tyler Hunter, his first catch. And he'll spot it short. The ball is being spotted about midfield. So it'll be fourth down. It's a heck of a play there by Tyler Hunter. Coming up and making a play in the open field against Lewis. When Lewis went into motion there, it adjusted their coverage. And he's not going to really go for this, is he? In midfield? Maybe try to get him to jump and call a timeout. It's a gamble. I mean, you're protecting a 13 point lead. Play clock is down at eight. Looks like Al Golden's going to call a timeout here at the bottom. Yeah, he's going to call a timeout. I, I think that's a. Uncharacteristic gamble for Golden at this point. Well, especially against a Florida State team that, that, that can use any play to, to flip the switch and, and get, get their, their their team heading in a good direction. They gave him an odd look at the formation with Yearby perhaps taking a direct snap. We'll see what happens after the timeout. Al Golden still has his offense on the field after the timeout going for it fourth and one at midfield. 
His offense has been playing well, but if you don't get it, certainly gives the Knowles an opportunity to seize momentum. Kirk, interesting here. Very interesting call, and, and I'll see it. If, I got to see this to believe it. It's interesting with this lead to go for it at midfield, but that shows a lot of confidence in his team. Kaya in the shotgun. Johnson to his left. Johnson has it stacked up but on second effort gets the first down at the 47 of Florida State. I think the Florida State defender Demarcus Walker helped push him across the first down marker 44 right there kind of drives him for another two yards. But I love you know it's easy to sit up here and say boy what's he thinking he's at midfield they got a 13 point lead what if they don't make it. The, the Canes are six and three. They're trying to become relevant again. And one way to do that is to knock off the defending national champions. So you love the attitude, the aggressive style, and players feed off of those kind of decisions from their head coach. They're also 11 of 14 this year on yes, fourth down. That's right. Kaya now wants to throw on first down down the middle was once again looking for a receiver but Ramsey came across and got a hand on it. Ramsey who played corner last year they moved him to safety after the injury to Tyler Hunter. Now they played him in a new position and I still feel like that's a great play a great effort to get his left hand on the ball balls under thrown. But I still feel like in replacing Lamarcus Joyner that is a tough ask to be able to fill in you blitz you got to cover in man you got to cover in zone there's a lot to do in that role. Oh showing a lot of pre snap pressure here on second and ten. Matthew Thomas is coming on the blitz right here. He said it's a run play. And Johnson tries the left side. It'll be third and four. Beautiful night to fly. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Whether you're going for it from a few yards out, as Miami just did, one yard out, or from miles away, go with the tire superior performance. Goodyear more driven. Another third down for the Canes. Is Golden thinking I, I got two plays to yeah, get this? I mean, after the, after the last fourth down, now you're in plus territory. Comes that blitz look again. Jalen Ramsey, he's looking over to get confirmation, but he's showing blitz. Also blitz right here. Got to hurry. Here comes pressure. Kaya throws it downfield. A looping throw caught for a first down inside the 20. Duke Johnson came out of the backfield and another pretty throw. And a wheel route out of the backfield. Duke Johnson slips out of the backfield, picks up a little screen on his way out of the backfield. He comes out right here. Watch the receiver. As he's coming out of the backfield, he kind of creates a little bit of a rub. There's no way that, again, a big outside linebacker like Chris Casher can stay with Duke Johnson. A great matchup, a way to locate it there by Kaya. James Coley is winning the chess match with Charles Kelly in a big way right now. Calling plays for Miami. And one step ahead of Charles Kelly in the Knowles defense. First down. This is Yearby. Stepping for a couple of yards. And Miami, following that field goal by Florida State, churning some clock. This drive's already taken five and a half minutes. They moved it 58 yards. Halftime is coming up here. And they get the ball to start yeah. the second half. You know, right now, when I talk about balance, for an, uh, this is a pro style of offense. It's not just production, 81 yards rushing, 235 through the air. It's also doing a good job of mixing up the looks. Pre snap motions, different formations, giving the Knowles a lot to think about. Kaya steps up, throws far side of the end zone, leaping attempt incomplete. Braxton Berrios, the true freshman, working against the veteran Ramsey. Well, we saw Dorsett have a chance to make a catch like this. The ball is thrown on the money. And that's a freshman diving, trying to make a play behind Jalen Ramsey. But how about the throw by Brad Kaya again? Burroughs gets behind Ramsey. The ball is thrown where it needs to be. He lays out. Everything's perfect. He just has to come down and hold on to the ball. It's the second time a Canes receiver has dropped a potential touchdown. Both would have been tough catches, but very catchable. So third down again. They need eight.
Play clock again at two. They fire at far side, complete in traffic, fighting for a first down, but stopped short is Coley. Now Golden not in any hurry at all here to make this decision. He's fine with the clock running down. In fact, Florida State realizes that they call a timeout themselves. I'm going to try to give Jameis Winston as much time as they can to work with before the half. What a frustrating first half for Winston. Nine of 16, but just 74 yards. Hasn't had a turnover. But the Knowles have a fumble, of course, on that kickoff return. John Saunders, Matt Brown, and Danny Cannell. There were some folks in there who predicted a Florida State road victory. They'll have their take on the first half, scores and highlights, and a busy day. The Capital One halftime report is coming up. Brad Kaya, a true freshman, had waited really all season, Kirk, for an environment like this. This is why he came from California to Miami. It's hard to overstate how good he's been. It's been unbelievable. I mean, again, we're seeing another quarterback last week. It was JT Barrett. Not just go out and execute, but play with such poise, such command of this offense. And James Coley, and we'll see how this game ends. It's only one half. Don't forget that Knowles usually turn it up in the second half. But for a first half, James Coley has been exceptional with an aggressive approach with a young quarterback, the offensive line, the receivers, the running backs, everybody kind of in sync doing their job. And so Badgley, the second field goal attempt tonight. Has been perfect in his young career from this distance from 29 yards, but hooks this one. Usually a kicker when his mechanics go awry like that, too much adrenaline in Miami. After a long drive, they held it six and a half minutes, but come up empty. They come up empty, and every point matters when you're playing. The hold, you know, the hold's not perfect, but it's good enough. He just pulls it. Now, the bigger story is a minute 42 to go. Jameis Winston remember after being down 21 to nothing at Louisville a couple weeks ago on a Thursday night they got the ball with about a minute left they went right down the field scored a touchdown to go in at halftime down 21 to 7 and that changed the complexion of that game and the confidence of the Seminoles approach and how they went into that second half. Let's see if the Canes they know that they've heard it all week. Let's see how they defend Winston. Well, this is usually where Winston and the Knowles can really start to crank it up. They begin at the 20 with one timeout in a minute 42. Take it to Williams. Winston pressured, fires downfield, catch made. And Travis Rudolph in one play already out to midfield. Winston falling back made that throw. Well, he also got a lot of pressure here from McCord right there. Does a good job getting away from the pressure. And true freshman, the left tackle, Roderick Johnson, that time got handled by McCord. McCord got to Winston, but Winston steps away from it, keeps his eyes downfield, and finds Rudolph. Winston again pressured. Gets away, fires incomplete. Heather reported on that ankle. He's clearly not not fully mobile over there at all. No, not at all. And, and when you're dealing with a offensive line that's been reshuffled, you've got some issues, you know, as far as pass protection. And the Canes aren't holding back. They're not in prevent defense, rush three and drop eight. These first two plays, they're bringing people and they're coming after Winston. I think for the reason, Chris, that he's not as mobile. If you can get to him, you just got to bring him down. No sacks for either team, but they have hurried Jameis a few times. Wilson came around in motion, but instead Winston looks up the middle, tries to get away, but can't. Brought down by Jermaine Grace, the pass rushing linebacker. Brought to blitz right up the middle. Great speed. They played zone behind it and brought the middle linebacker right up the middle. Remember, this is the linebacker that I talked about has 4-4 four, four speed playing middle linebacker in these obvious passing situations. There's no way Jameis Winston's going to be able to get away from him. Clock ticking inside a minute. Fisher does not use his final timeout. And third and 15. Winston fires all over the middle, complete inside the Miami 40-yard line to Rashad Green. In rhythm gets the snap gets back and gets the ball out of his hands and who does he go to when the game's on the line when you need a big play he's in rhythm balls out right to number 80 every single time. 
Winston again, good protection, firing for Green downfield into traffic, intercepted. Deion Bush having a big first half ends the Florida State threat. And Winston forces another one. Just talked about who does he go to, Rashad Green. But Deion Bush, he's, he was sensing the same thing. He cheated. He was playing center field to get around Gunner. He has a chance to get behind Gunner, but what he's not accounting for is Bush reading his eyes, sitting back in center field, comes over, cheated, actually, cheated in his drop as the ball was snapped. He started to move to his right to give himself a chance to have to get to the corner to take away Rashad Green, who went downfield. He put it up in the air, telegraphed the throw, and Bush makes a heck of a play. His second big play of the night. Exactly. He forced a fumble with a big hit. He's a complete safety. He can cover. He can blitz. Excellent tackler. And you say great center fielder. Yeah. yeah. Two years ago, he exploded on the scene as a true freshman. As I said, he had to fight through some injuries last year, but he is back and providing a lot of leadership and big play abilities we've seen here tonight in this first half. A big play pass attack for Brad Kaya. The Canes gained 320 yards in the first half. And lead Florida State 23-10. The Seminoles in a very familiar position. And Winston find the second half magic again tonight in front of a very raucous environment here in South Florida. Down to Heather with Jimbo Fisher. Coach, you guys have been in this position before. Yeah. Fifth time down at halftime. What's been the biggest challenge so far? Well, now they're, they're getting, moving the ball on offense. We're not getting stops on defense. We missed two third downs early in the game. We had a chance to get points, and then they haven't stopped. And we got to stop. And we that moved the ball. The fumble on the kickoff hurt us too. But you know, hey, we got we're down two point, two possessions. Got to go play. It's been a frustrating half for your offense. What's your message to Jameis? It's not really frustrating. We've been moving the ball very well. I like the last three drives. We're moving up and down the field. Hey, he just got to keep playing, big aggressive. Coach, thank you. So Miami trying to snap another streak leads by 13 at the break. Stay tuned after these messages the Capital One halftime report is coming up. And welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC and this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Not a different kind of feeling, but a familiar kind of feeling for Florida State as Brad Kaya and the Canes lead it by 13. First 15 games of this winning streak, the Knowles led at halftime in all 15. But in the last 11 games, they've now trailed at half six times, Kirk, as we see the close calls. They have been dominant in the second halves against Clemson, NC State, Notre Dame, and Louisville. Plus 61 in the second half against all those teams. Can they do it again? Well, they've been living on the edge all year, and you just show the games where it looks like it might go one way, and they find a way to reshuffle the deck. And we've always asked Jimbo, what did you say in halftime? What adjustments did you make? He didn't make any. They didn't make a lot and all those times that they've come back we executed better and we'll see what Heather says she had a chance to talk with him but the thing that stands out to me is they need to find a rhythm right now on offense you need to get a stop against Miami's offense the Hurricanes will have it to begin this third quarter as we take a look at our Pacific life game summary rush yards. A quiet 80 yards, but Brad Kaya, a big play pass attack thrown for 240. And look on third down, you see the, the numbers there 320 yards total offense. Third down, 8 of 11. They've averaged their distance to go has been third and four, whereas the Knowles, two of six, their average when they've gotten to third down has been about third and eight. This is the 120th rated offense in the country on third down efficiency coming into this game. They have found the formula. And Kaya has executed so far. And he's throwing on first down. Over the middle again. That's where they've lived all night. But this time Jalen Ramsey tracked it down, broke it up before it could get to Walford. Boy, that's a great job of Jalen Ramsey. First and 10 play action really hurt this Florida State defense. He does a great job of undercutting it. The reason he was anticipating the throw and anticipating the play call. He just had to come up with the interception. It's exactly what the Knowles needed to start this second half. The Canes catch a break. And 
Second ten. It's a run. Johnson cuts it back. Knocked down right at the marker at the 35 yard line. Heather. Chris Al Golden reminded his team that Florida State has been here before. They must play four quarters. He said all week I told them that you must start fast not once but twice in this game. They are the champs. You have to attack. Golden thinks the success so far on offense has been due to the run game setting up the passing game. But Golden also stressed to his team he thinks the run game will be the X factor in the fourth quarter. They've got to run to win it. It's one of their mottos. Johnson got the first down. Here's a first down throw, and Duke out of the backfield is dragged down. Terrific play again by Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, I was watching him the entire time, and does a good job of going right by the tight end who's out here flexed out. Watch him read this and use his speed and acceleration. That's instincts. Talked about how far he has come is filling in the shoes. The Marcus Joyner in that nickel spot. He started as a safety last year. Different role this year. Twice here early to start this second half. Number eight is all over the field. You look for leaders on the road. Tough environment down. You, you need the guys to step up. And Ramsey has announced himself early in the quarter. He's a guy who's trying to make a difference on the defensive side. And second and 12, another run. Johnson hit immediately and wrestled down. It was Derek Mitchell Jr. who lost his helmet. He'll have to come out, but it's third and long. I was just saying to, to the guys downstairs in our truck, why, why we have not said Mario Edwards or Eddie Goldman or Derek Mitchell until now where he makes a play. Where's this defensive line been? They're one of the better defensive lines in the country as far as their potential. But so far in this game, now it's a long way to go, but so far in this game between the play calling, maybe catching them off guard a little bit, and the Miami offensive line doing a good job. They have not been a factor at all in this ball game. Canes have converted on some third and longs. They need 11 here. Kaya steps up, looks far side, has a man running free, but he overthrew Stacy Coley for the second time tonight. Coley slow to get up. It's fourth down. There's another miscue, another breakdown between Darby number three, who just lets him go, and the safety Tyler Hunter. Darby kind of looked at him. They both emerged, came together after the play. I just don't think they were on the same page. That's been a that's been a reoccurring theme for the for the Florida State secondary in the pass coverage is breakdowns in coverage. That time, Miami was not able to make them pay. First punt of the night for Justin Vogel. Low kick drives back inside the 15 yard line. John Green trying to run to the corner. Gets it and scoots out up across the 45 yard line. And now a flag comes in, and Miami, with a late hit out of bounds, will set up Winston in great field position. A big mistake, a great return. Kaya, looks by like the way, Kaya being checked it, out. Yeah, it looks like a hamstring. cramp. Possible cramp. After the play was over, the dead ball personal foul, 66. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Sonny Adogwu, the backup left tackle. That's the first major penalty of Miami. That wasn't even close. That's just a brain cramp. After a 34 yard return, tack on 15 and Winston and Florida State set up inside the Miami 40 first possession of the quarter. That looked like targeting to me. I mean, he came in really high, not just a late a late hit, but Rashad Green's headgear went straight back. He was met with anger on the Florida State sideline. First down throw for Winston. Diving catch Kermit Whitfield inside the 20 his first catch of the night. It's like a different guy. I mean it's incredible. What is this week nine or week ten? When Jameis Winston gets back to throw in the second half. I don't know what is said to him at halftime. He is so much more assertive with his reads with his throws stepping into his throws putting it right on the money. Cook. Knocked down, loses the ball, and Miami has it. A fumble. And Florida State's threat ends right there. A third turnover for the Seminoles. Chris, I couldn't tell if a foot 
from a Miami player cause this fumble who's on the ground or if it was Kirby right there who gets his hand on it. Look at the look at the foot. There's OK. It's his left hand to Kirby. Knock that ball loose. Raphael Kirby a junior. Calvin Wardle made the recovery Kirk. Kirby's had kind of a tough night. He, he dropped a pick. Sets missed the, a tackle. Yeah, <laughs> he sets the edge. He's losing his balance and he just kind of puts his hand out there and just when it looked like Florida State. Here comes Florida State. Big punt return. 15 yards for a late hit. A great throw by Jameis Winston. Looks like the Knowles are ready to reestablish themselves. Boom. A turnover and the Canes get the ball back. The flag comes down. Johnson dragged down by Northrop. So turnovers on consecutive Florida State possessions, both deep in Miami territory. Big Pick at the end of the half, and now that fumble. And let me get him for a chop block here. The right guard is Adora. We have an illegal chop block. Players 62 and 63. Half the distance to the goal. We'll replay the there. Yeah, Mc McDermott was locked up. With with a Florida State defender and it might have been Eddie Goldman. Zadura just went down low and well, that is a costly penalty. And here's 63. Anytime a player is already locked up with another offensive player and he submarines him, that's going to be a chop block. Great call by the officials. And first and 22. Kaya well protected fires over the middle another catch by Walford and they're close to a first down working the middle again of that Noel secondary and he is beaten man to man but this time he's just going to find the soft spot in the zone Brad Kaya showing not just against man but against zone he puts it right there where his tight end Walford can make the catch and again be able to get down and protect himself in traffic. A great throw and a great read by Kaya. Nice job of settling down there by the big tight end Walford. Walford, a guy who was a basketball player, comes from Bell Glade, Florida. Until his senior year, played very little football. But you can see the obvious athletic ability. So Johnson picks his way, and after that penalty set him back, they get a first down. Celebrating its 10th year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to the participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicks. Since 05, more than $3.7 million contributed by Allstate to scholarship funds. The feeling for this Miami offense protecting the league, Kirk, every first down is going to be important. No doubt about it. They already gave away four points a missed field goal, a missed extra point, every possession. Every point important against Jameis Winston. Johnson now hurtling for a nice first down gain. They just outflanked him on the right there. In fact, Walford, the tight end, he didn't have anybody to block. Comes he, up limping. Yeah, he went airborne there, and it's always dangerous. Guys getting to cramp up, looks like, Kirk. No doubt. Heat and humidity. Terrence Smith once he went up into the air Terrence Smith 24 coming off from the right hits him right there. Smith hit him while he was an airborne kind of an awkward position to take a shot. Cassandra Mitchell. Who cooked dinner for all the running backs and the defensive backs as is her custom. He says he plays football for her. Back in Miami where the Canes lead 23 to 10 Duke Johnson having an amazing game and the inspiration that can come from adversity for him is twofold. One is the broken ankle suffered last year against FSU. The other is his childhood. Johnson said he wouldn't be here without his mom Cassandra that everything he does is for her. In fact that appreciation is on his shoulder in the form of a tattoo. Cassandra Duke says kept the family together after his dad Randy passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease when Duke was 14. Now Cassandra does everything she can to help this team out. Chris as you mentioned having the running backs over for dinner every Thursday night for home games. Duke Johnson treated for a cramp Heather. Joe Yearby is spelling him. He makes the run there for a first down. Cassandra 
approach to Duke you know, after he broke his ankle against the Seminoles a year ago to get past him are you are you running yet are, are you back urging him to get back and, and work hard she thought he could be in better shape than he was last year I she love it her ball. I love it and off and you're being wrestled down a physical tackle by Goldman inside. He's only a true freshman. And he reminds you of a young Duke Johnson with his running style. Very natural runner, outstanding vision. Not quite as big as Duke. No. We'll put on some yet. more pounds, not probably. Yet. Yep. Yeah. Miami again, not in any hurry at all. This was the plan come out passing early. They knew they'd have to run the ball in the second half. But it's a play action fake. Kaya steps up, delivers into traffic. It's an overthrow. Just no room over there as Tyler Hunter was right with Malcolm Lewis. Jalen Ramsey that time on the blitz. I think he surprised Yearby, the freshman back, who barely got a, a piece of Ramsey, which allowed Kaya to step up into that pocket. Now it's back to third down. This time third and a little bit longer than what they've been dealing with most of the night. This is going to be frustrating for Florida State when they don't have the football because Miami will bleed that play clock and every time they get a first down time starts to tick away already within nine minutes in the quarter. Kaya looks quickly batted down at the line of scrimmage. Getting a hand up was Mario Edwards who hasn't made a whole lot of plays tonight. It breaks that one up and here comes a fourth and seven. And they're fortunate. Florida State's fortunate that Mario Edwards knocked that down. Dorsett was open and had a first down. Edwards is coming off his best game in his career. Nine tackles last week. Four tackles for a loss and a sack against Virginia. He's been challenged by Jimbo Fisher in recent weeks and he's answered the, the answered that challenge tonight. As you said, Chris, we've been wondering where he's been. He's had a quiet night. Vogel hits it with backspin and a fair catch taken in traffic. It's Bobble. They didn't give much room, did they? He recovers it, and Winston and the Knowles offense go back to work from their 15 yard line, still down by 13. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by AT&T. Mobilizing your world. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes on Digital HD Today. And Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. We're in the Allstate Saturday Night Football bus watching Alabama hang on against Mississippi State. You know, the All-State has good sweepstakes for a chance to win $100,000 plus a VIP trip to the college football playoff semifinal game at the All-State Sugar Bowl and the national championship game as well as weekly prizes. 8.39 in the third. Second Seminoles possession. They've had turnovers in Miami territory the last two possessions. Winston, a strike to O'Leary who shakes off a tackle, gains eight. One of the first times we've called Nick O'Leary's name. Canes have done a very good job of defending O'Leary, who comes up with a lot of plays. What is second reception yeah. of the night? Both of them short. Yeah. Tyson has not done much downfield, Kirk said. Only three completions mm -hmm. beyond 15 yards. Hinder is in the game, goes out into the pattern, but Winston's looking near side. And breaking a tackle and getting a first down to the 35 yard line is Kermit Whitfield. Well, it's been a, a, obviously a rough night so far for, for Jameis. Look across the board there. They haven't had a lot of success downfield. Chris, you just mentioned that. Most of their damage has forced him to be very, very patient, which Miami's done all year long. They force you to run the ball and throw underneath him. They take away the deep plays for the most part. Winston flips it down again to Pender. He gets across the 40, takes a hard shot. Now, Jameis has thrown nine touchdown passes, Kirk, on short throws this year, but throws beyond 10 yards, eight touchdowns, 
and 10 interceptions. All but one of his picks have been on those throws beyond 10. Not at all what he did last year. No, well, you had Kelvin Benjamin, who's now starting for the Carolina Panthers, doing a great job for Cam Newton. They, they just haven't been able to replace that vertical threat. That was the question for me in Arlington when they played Oklahoma State. Who would become KB? Who would be the vertical threat? Pender bangs forward, gets a first down across the 45. And I think it's really forced Jameis Winston to try to on the fly in games adjust to the rhythm other than Rashad Green a lot of new faces out there at wide receiver and a lot of them are a lot shorter than what he's had to deal with there a couple times in the first half just staring down receivers and both times the Miami Hurricanes when he did that able to come up with interceptions a first down throw but a miscommunication with Rashad Green who gestures and says I I don't think I was supposed to do that. These guys have been on the same page really for the last couple of years but in recent weeks there's been some kind of misfires between yeah. the, the trusty receiver and the quarterback but not just green but the other receiver and, and again this is a system that is built on the quarterback processing the coverage quickly and getting the ball out of his hands and anticipating where those receivers are going to be and if the receiver doesn't read that same coverage receiver reads one thing he's going downfield Jameis Winston's not waiting to read the, the route he's getting the ball out of his hands goes down the seam it's O'Leary who's starting to work free against Deion Bush the safety inside the 40. Knowles are rolling now they sure are and that's a great matchup for Florida State because O'Leary a veteran 235 pounds against Deion Bush as good as Bush is he comes right here and he breaks across so he got him a little bit of a push there at the top of the, the break of the route gave him the separation that he needed Winston had his eye on him the whole time. Pender in the pistol formation. Takes it straight ahead and picks his way for a short game. Heather. Chris, you're talking about players that Jameis Winston doesn't have. Two Florida State All-Americans from last year's team here inside the box. Terrence Brooks and Timmy Jernigan, both rookies for the Ravens. In fact, Timmy gave an impassioned speech to the team in the locker room talking about the rivalry, saying, I wish I could be here with you. And then he finished with, a lot of you haven't felt like what it's like to lose. Make sure you don't get that feeling tonight. You won't like it. Good thanks. Ravens on a bye week. And second and long Winston fires over the middle. Catch made by Whitfield running free. Still running down inside the 10. And here comes Florida State. First and goal. Nick O'Leary cleared that out to open it up underneath for Kermit Whitfield. Well designed play. Miami sitting in his zone, but clearing that zone out, opening it up underneath. And Whitfield, again, one of these receivers undersized, but great acceleration when he gets the ball in his hands. Pender's ankle is finally 100%. Expect to see a lot of him in the second half. He's got it again. Winston tries to get out and throw a block, but Pender cannot get away. Trapped in the backfield by Olsen Pierre. Davis on a bad ankle was trying to get out and be a lead blocker there. He sure was. This is one of the first times we've seen this the new center, Cameron Irving, get beaten. And now we see Pender, who's been fighting that ankle for four or five weeks, out. And Carlos Williams checks in. That's a bad sign for Florida State. Back at the 11, second and goal. Winston delivers to the end zone off the hands of Ermin Lane who says my bad and he's right. It went right into the hole of the defense back middle plenty of time great execution the ball is there it's high and Lane just doesn't squeeze the ball for the touchdown as soon as Jameis let go of it he knew that he had the coverage that he needed Lane from the outside came into the middle covered two so there's two safeties out wide nobody in the middle the linebacker didn't run with him he just didn't catch the football third and goal gotta hurry batted away 
high and caught for a touchdown on the carom by Carlos Williams. And a big break goes the Seminoles way. McCord batted it in the air. Carlos Williams collected it and strolls in for a huge play. Sometimes you got to be lucky, right? He was very oh. lucky. Sun Life is stunned. And as Aguayo cuts it to a six point lead, 419 in the third. A third wow. and goal. Third and goal. A great job of defending it by Tyreek McCord. He knocks that ball up into the air. And Carlos Williams, a senior, sees it, catches it, and scores for Florida State. All right, thank you. Here, a six point game. The Seminoles marching 85 yards in 11 plays. And Carlos Williams first career receiving touchdown Kirk third down you're thinking Tyreek McCord probably going to rush the quarterback but instead he drops and Jameis Winston's trying to get the ball out here to Rashad Green he never even senses and feels that McCord drops puts his right hand up ball goes into the air and there's Carlos Williams who the ball wasn't even intended for looks up sees the ball catches it walks into the end zone. If looking for green it would have been a very tough play. It was a poor read by Jameis Winston. He got away with one great call by Miami. They dropped the defensive end instead of rushing him kind of a zone pressure really surprised Winston. He got away with a poor read that time with Carlos Williams catching that tip pass. This is now as much pressure as Miami's offense has been under all night. One possession game. Low snap Johnson. Breaks free a tough runner between the tackles picks up six on first down college basketball doubleheader on Tuesday night over on ESPN at seven and nine Eastern time Duke one of the most talented rosters they've had against Michigan State State Farm Champions Classic Kansas takes on number one Kentucky in the nightcap. Been a little bit more conservative with their approach in the second half comparing how they really attacked Florida State in the first half. Johnson cuts it back driving forward Reggie Northrup trying to stop him short of the marker it's right there at the yellow line and they're going to move the chains. Heather talked about Timmy Jernigan and Terrence Brooks being back here. If you think about Christian Jones and Telvin Smith and Lamarcus Joyner, they lost a lot of leadership. In fact, all those guys are not just in the NFL. A lot of them are starting now in the NFL. And I think we've seen Reggie Northrup really grow up in the last three games and provide some much needed leadership, kind of an emotional spark plug for this defense. They've been desperately looking for somebody besides Jalen Ramsey to help out, and he's been that guy. Johnson does try to bounce this and he's dropped behind the line and it's Northrop again. Just talked about his emotion and what he brings to the table and there's an example of it. He makes a play and then he comes up and then you know when you're watching a game you can tell the energy of a football game and the feel inside of a stadium. It's a great play and a stiff arm which is what Duke Johnson's known for and Northrop brings him right down and again inspiring the rest of that defense the leadership that they've been looking for. Big part of Florida State's comeback stopping the run in the second half. Getting the football back to Winston. Kaya second down throw in traffic. Nice completion to Stanley Stobart. Ball still loose on the ground and Florida State falls on it. Nate Andrews. And the second time a Miami tight end has fumbled the ball after a long gain. Knowles get it back down only six. The Knowles keep their composure. They give up another big play to the tight end and they take it away. Nate Andrews who's a playmaker. He started last year a lot as a freshman known as a playmaker. 
He's not making a tackle, but he ends up stripping the ball away. Tyler Hunter's in there as well. So Andrews causes the fumble and then goes downfield and picks it up. The ball gets back into the hands of Jameis Winston. Both Miami turnovers very similar. Fumbles by tight ends after gains across the middle. Miami crowd trying to make it tough on Winston. But he's got good protection for a while. Now gets away. A flag comes down. They grabbed his face mask. So it's kind of a free play. But O'Leary makes the catch at the 45. You see the strength of Jameis Winston because they got a pretty good grip on the face mask. Yeah, Michael White grabbed on to that. Jameis Winston continued with the play. As he said, he knew he had a free play. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 11 defense. 15 yards out to the end of the run. Miami now with three major penalties in the second half. Yeah, I mean, he almost pulled his helmet off. Jameis Winston is a big man at about 240 pounds. You're not going to pull him down. You're going to rip his helmet off. You're not going to bring him down, though, by grabbing onto his face mask. So he gets the completion and then 15 more yards, and just like that, they're inside Miami territory. Leary gained 12 in the reception, add on 15. Beginning to really feature the tight end a lot more after halftime. Winston fires incomplete. They continue to try to pressure him right up the middle, Kirk. Get him to backpedal if they can. They brought Tremaine Grace quite a bit, and, that, and that's the whole reason. They thought they feel that inside blitzes challenge the running backs and pass protection. He's going to go hurry up here and get him to throw off his back foot. Haynes confused, trying to get lined up, didn't have the right personnel on the field. And knifing over to the left side is Kermit Whitfield. The receiver took a handoff. So some confusion now on the Miami defensive side as the Knowles go tempo again. Yeah, they're going tempo, and the Canes are trying to get some new defenders on the field. I think Miami ended up having 12 players on the field and got away with it to set up this third down. There was there was a lot of confusion. They need four. Complete over the middle for a first down to the 15. He threw a rocket to Travis Rudolph after collecting a low snap. Exactly right, Chris. A low snap. They put trips to the field, man to man, and it's Travis Rudolph matched up here against Deion Bush. A great matchup, and there's the throw from Jameis Winston. Talk about throwing the ball with authority. And Travis Rudolph just continues to get better. Gets the separation there. A scuffle down there. Players coming together yep. where the ball is spotted. There's also a hurricane Anthony Chicolo, the defensive end, who's down way back at the 40 yard line. There's another hurricane down at the 15 yard line. There's Chicolo, the senior leaders of that front four. Looks like Bobby Hart, 51, was involved there. Bush while, also being helped while, up. While Bush was down. There were a couple of Miami players down. Bobby Hart and a, and a couple of the Florida State players started to talk to each other really near the injury, really close. Jameis Winston was involved there. He's in the middle of it. So it's getting typically feisty in the final minute of the third quarter here as the Knowles are threatening again a chance to take their first lead of the night. First out of the 16. Eighty five yard touchdown drive minutes ago. It marched fifty one so far here very quickly. And now two Miami starters on defense out at the moment. You fake it to Williams. 
And now Winston throws it short. And an arm throw intended for Freddie Stevenson. Catch made for a very short gain, and that may be the final play of the third quarter unless the Knowles hurry up and snap it here. They will just let the clock wind down. They have played from behind all night. Miami's had chances to build a bigger lead, but that lead is very fragile right now. Fourth quarter coming up. Knowles threatening. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Giving you tonight's aerial coverage, whether you're going for it from a few yards out or miles away, go with the tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Beginning of the fourth quarter in Sun Life Stadium, Florida State, ball deep in Miami territory at the 15 yard line, second and nine, a chance with a touchdown to take their first lead of the night. Good protection. Winston fires low and behind his receiver. Travis Rudolph in the pattern. It's third and long. This is where Jameis Winston, when his team has been trailing, he gets to third down. He typically is in command. Now, I know they caught a break on that last third down where the ball was tipped by Tyreek McCord and went into the air. Carlos Williams caught it. They scored a touchdown, but. Between Jimbo Fisher drawing plays up on third down late in the game and Jameis Winston reading coverage and executing, they typically come through here. The flag comes down and a false start, Kirk. It's going to be third and 15 now. False start. Offense number three. That's a five yard play. And it's Bobo Wilson on the edge. Rolls have been penalty free in terms of penalties accepted tonight until that one. Now you're going to see a blitz. I anticipate Jermaine Grace, number five, coming up the middle, trying to put pressure on Jim, on Jameis. Here he comes. He's been blitzing all night on third down. Rashad Green has not made a catch yet in the second half. They pick up the pressure. Fire for Green. When in doubt, they look for one of the great receivers to play the position here at Florida State, but that was just too high. Yeah, a little bit high. No chance, really. Good coverage, actually. There's nowhere for Jameis Winston to go with the football, but Artie Burns losing his cool there a little bit. The emotions where we had a little bit of altercation. This is an emotional rivalry game. Teams cannot afford to have a a mishap by getting involved with a verbal confrontation and cost their team 15 yards. Something to watch in the fourth quarter. Aguayo from 38 makes it a three point game. Mr. Almost Perfect. The Knowles are getting closer. Pressure really on Miami now. Good call, Kirk, on College Game Day. You foresaw the end of that 17-game SEC skid for the Razorbacks. Combination of Arkansas getting better, and I think LSU being a little bit spent emotionally after the last three weeks that they've had to deal with and some of the teams they've had to play. Now, how will Brad Kaya and play caller James Coley handle this next possession? Down up only three. Coley's going to bring it out, and Stacy Coley, as they try to rip at the ball, brings it out to the 26-yard line. The Pacific Life game summary, early success for Kaya yeah, here. Brad Kaya, James Coley, the play caller, offensive coordinator, they came out swinging. A lot of first and town passes, first and ten passes, opportunities for Kaya to make plays against man-to-man -man coverage. His receivers, his big tight end, was able to get separation, interception. 
where uh, you had Jameis Winston staring down the receivers. Jameis catches a break here to get to Knowles back into this football game and to give him life, to give him to believe. Chris, I'm with you. James Coley called a very aggressive game in the first half. Now with the Knowles closing in, how will he approach this one? It was a first down run and a nice gain for Duke Johnson who's closing fast on his 13th career 100 yard game. Steelers and Titans Monday night 815 served up by Applebee's. His last six first and 10 play calls have all been runs. Before those last six first and 10 play calls they had 17 different first and 10 plays 10 pass seven runs becoming a little bit more conservative and a little bit more predictable even though they have a talented back in Duke Johnson that's not who they were in the first half when they scored 23 points. They don't take seven yards on first down every time and now Johnson breaking free across midfield and inside the Florida State 40. But nice job at the right side of that offensive line opening up a big hole there I'm going to right tackle Trevor Darling a freshman and a nice block as well from Philip Dorsett. You get this you get Duke Johnson to the second level with the patience and the burst that he has and he's going to pick up a lot of yards. That's his biggest carry of the night and he goes out again complaining of a cramp in the hamstring it looks like 28 yards puts him over 100 for the 13th time in his great career. So Joe Yearby spells him play action though and first down batted down the back was wide open but Jalen Ramsey yet again makes a play and lets Walter Tucker know about it. Yeah he sure did. Jalen Ramsey has been blitzing a ton tonight from that nickel spot. He's got long arms doesn't he. It's long arms and instead of just you know he, he ends up going around the back who they wanted to get the ball to and he kind of smacks it right back into the face of Brad Kaya. That's like back backyard basketball there. Huh? Lucky he's, a, he's athletic enough to catch that football. So that was a first down throw from Coley. Yep. Now it's second and ten. Your beat. Picks his way. Nice run by the freshman. Almost broke free before Taron Smith grabbed him. Third and about four. Thinking ahead here with Al Golden and how aggressive he has been tonight when it comes to decision making. It's a long potential field goal. You wonder if this is four down territory from this position. It'd be a pretty long field goal for Bagsley who's already missed a chip shot and had an extra point block tonight. Hand off to Yearby. First down. So they run it on third and four and move the chains. How about the jump cut here by the true freshman Yearby? Gets so spoiled watching Duke Johnson run with the football. Yearby there in the backfield because there was penetration by 44. Walker, watch his cut right there. Cuts behind Walker, who did a good job of getting upfield there on third down. Right there, the vision and instincts to cut back, and he didn't do that. He didn't pick up the first down. It's 190 pounder running strong between the tackles. The true freshman. Another first down throw. Kaya again has the pass deflected. That was Goldman, the tackle who dropped into coverage. They're now getting their hands on a lot of passes. And Eddie Goldman, who is going to rush there, he, think about this. Goldman's 320 pounds. His instincts took him off the, the line of scrimmage because he's looking at Brad Kaya. He knew he couldn't get to him, so he's at 320. He starts to drop like a linebacker, and you're right. He got a hand on it to knock it down, but the big tight end. Dobart was not covered. Johnson back in the game. Again, a first down incompletion. And a second down run. Duke not much hammered hard as he went down there. A short gain. And Mario Edwards, own 294 pounds, was out there on the edge. That's a great effort here by Mario Edwards getting off to tight end. Dobart. Dobart trying to win that edge. Mario Edwards would not give it up and of course there's his man once again Jalen Ramsey both of them would not get outflanked there's nowhere there for the talented back Duke Johnson to go. 
Third and ten. Marginal field goal range for Michael Badgley at this point. Play clock at five. This guy is see it. Pressure. Hit as he throws a wobbly pass incomplete. For the first time, the Knowles got out to the quarterback, and who else? Jalen Ramsey was in there. Well, they just suffocated Kaya this time. They just sold out and brought everybody. Jalen Ramsey's been blitzing the entire second half. They also brought the middle linebacker Terrence Smith. Kaya lucky to get that ball off, and actually, because it was tipped. That ball, once it went up in the air, there was a no in the middle of the field. That's an interception. So the Knowles brought the house by Charles Kelly. Set up this field goal. Badgley missed from 29 earlier to try to restore a six point lead for the Canes. And well done by the true freshman. So Florida State gets the ball back. Still within one score. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. Your next truck, Ford F-150. And Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. Almost exactly four years ago, late November 2011, the last time Jameis Winston was on the losing side in the football game. This game far from lost yet. We'll get the football back. Miami's lead back to six. Tonight the Knowles have already clinched the Atlantic Division. Thinking about much bigger prizes down the road. Driven to the end zone for Whitfield. Hermit Whitfield gets the corner, flashes the speed, and a pretty nice return. The Alabama High School 5A state semifinals. Hueytown is Winston's team on a field that has seen better days against Viger. And Jameis's team held in check. Viger winning it 20 to 7. Not since that night has Jameis Winston been on the losing side of a football game. He needs some help on those snaps. No wonder they lost. <laughs> 22 and 0 is a starting quarterback at Florida State. And in all of those starts, they've hit at least 30 points. Being challenged. That he didn't start, of course. McGuire said they didn't get 30 against Clemson. You know, the area that he's being challenged the most tonight, I think, is just the overall patience. And they, they mentioned that to us this week that because of the way Miami plays defensively, because they were going to play inspired and with a lot of emotion, a rivalry game, it's not just. Pin their ears back and play man every play. They, they play a lot of zone. Force you to be patient. Winston floats it. Caught by Rudolph. Shakes a tackle. Driven out near midfield. Nice job of giving Winston time. This is man to man. And this is Travis Rudolph running away from a safety. Jamal Carter in man to man coverage. The play took a while because he was all the way to the left. Came all the way across the middle. Got the separation against man to man. But you get Rudolph matched up against the safety. Again, Jameis Winston identifying the matchup, finding it, and making the throw. Play action, plenty of time on first down. Now Winston takes off for the first time tonight, even on a bad ankle, kind of weaves his way for an eight yard gain. Got to pay the price in the fourth quarter trailing. Boy, is that a wall that was just set up in front of him? I mean, he had four, five, six seconds. Now I know they had coverage downfield, but they still rushed four, and the fifth guy was starting to try to come in there as well. Nobody could get after Jameis Winston. Kane's defensive line making a deal without Anthony Ciccolo, the senior out with his knee wrapped up, looks to be done for the night. Williams out of the I formation lowers the head. Should be just 
a few inches short of a first down. Something also to keep in mind now that we're in the fourth quarter. And I know there's a lot of frigid conditions around the north and the northwest. But down here, the heat and humidity is still a factor. We've seen a number of players cramping up tonight. These teams always talk about doing those fourth quarter drills to try to get an advantage mentally and physically. This is the kind of game where that gets tested. Need about a half yard. Williams behind Freddie Stevenson. Not much, but they do move the chains. First down at the 41. Well, I'd have to say that so far the move of Cameron Irving, one of the better left tackles in the country, to center and moving Roderick Johnson, 77, up to the starting position at left tackle. Considering this environment, it's his first start as a senior ever at center. They're off to a pretty good start with this new, new offensive line. Once again, they pick up the Miami pressure. The ball thrown way over the head of O'Leary. A couple of less than perfect snaps from Irving, but but not bad. He's grading out pretty well for yeah. center start. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing to think that. I, I talked to Coach Trickett on the offensive line coach on the field before, and he said, you know, we think Ryan Holfield's going to be a great player, but right now we need to get more physical and up the middle at that center spot, and that's why they moved Irving in there. And they said all year they've been doing some center quarterback exchange with Irving on Mondays in practice. A motion green, a throwback inside, catch by Irvin Lane, and Denzel Perryman greets him rudely after a short gain. Again, sitting in zone allows Perryman and the rest of this defense to keep their eyes on the quarterback, be able to look around, put their head on a swivel, and Perryman makes a big play. What does Fisher dial up on third and five? They've converted three of four after halftime. Pressure picked up incomplete on a slant. Antonio Crawford defending Travis Rudolph well. It's fourth down. Now what does Fisher do? Well, with the kicker that he has, there's always that option. Wyo is coming out, Kirk. This will be a long field goal for the Groza Award winner of last season. Jameis, I think, would have like to have a chance to convert this on fourth down. Yeah, and he made some kicks from 55 in the pregame, so this is within his range. This is from 53, dead center. For the guy who is in his career, missed just two. What a luxury to have an NFL caliber sophomore kicker like that. And Florida State back within three, 7 12 to play. Ah, Beavers have a history of knocking off top 10 teams in the road, and Arizona State has lost four in a row in Corvallis. We'll keep an eye on that. Florida State with third longest win streak in the last 20 years in college football. In Miami stop it at 25 tonight. The Canes with that 34 game streak finally stopped by Ohio State. And the Fiesta Bowl. Part of that was a championship year for Larry Coker. And this quarterback be the starter to stop the streak. After halftime, Kirk, just three of ten. Again, goes back to that different approach from the Canes. Up three now with 7-12 to go. Johnson hit in the backfield and driven down by Desmond Holland. This is the battle. This is where you're going to decide the outcome of this football game. And this is a great effort. Now, this is a defensive line, but for the most part, hasn't made a lot of plays. This time, Holland, who's a senior, slips right through a nice crease there, uses that quickness to be able to get in to Duke Johnson. Johnson never had a chance. Now how can this freshman who seems so calm you see his face you can't believe how poised he is how will he respond. He will be called on 
to make plays in the last six and a half minutes to protect this league. Could you get that feeling? Got to hurry here. Play clock at three. Do they notice? Plus the left tackle moved. Eric Flowers. So it was either going to be a delay of game or a procedure. Full star. Number 70. Offense. That's a five yard penalty. You get Feliciano. The, the Knowles, as we've talked so often this year, have a heart of a champion. They do not go away despite how far they get down. But I, my observation tonight is a combination of great Florida State, great will to come back and try to compete and find a way to win this game, along with Miami just trying to hold on to the lead. Kaya fires over the head of Malcolm Lewis. And it's third and very long. Kirk, the difference you talked about after halftime with the Canes offense. Yeah, and I, I don't think it's just the production with the points 23 and 3, and you go all the way down that list. I also think there's a, just a difference in a mentality and the approach. They had that big lead at halftime, 23 to 10. They, they were aggressive, they were attacking Florida State. They weren't erring on the side of being cautious. And in the second half with that big lead they've, they've kind of done that which feeds right into what Florida State wants and how they get the ball back to Jameis Winston. Kaya flips it down on a screen to Johnson a long way to go to make the first down and Duke will be knocked down way short. We've seen other teams fall prey to this just find a way to hold on for dear life against the Seminoles and it has not worked in this long no, win streak. No not at all because again you, you start to feed into this heart this team that believes that they're going to find a way and when you get more conservative and more predictable it allows them to be able to focus on hey we're going to be they're going to play with confidence we know we can stop them because they're being cautious we're going to get the ball back to Jameis it's a combination of their defense and their offense. Vogel with the punt they peel back to set up a return but Green makes a fair catch good field position for Winston down only three with 5 11 to go. Vizio comes football playoff rankings the big question. How high will Alabama climb how far will Mississippi State fall final margin was five. A little bit deceptive. They were down 19 nothing at one point, but they did battle back. And will the committee punish TCU for a narrow escape against one of the worst Big 12 teams? And what's going to happen in the final 5 11 here, of course? First down throw for Winston. O'Leary has it, loses the ball. Do they call it a catch? Incomplete, they rule it. Incomplete. He took a huge shot. The sure handed senior tight end. Did he come down with this one? His Boy, feet hit the a... ground with the ball. Well, he comes down with both feet. Perryman hit the ball with a and, helmet. And, and, and let's see it in real speed. Super slow motion. It's really hard to tell. Boy, that. Did, I don't know if both feet were down or not. Winston rolls around, flips it. Nice one handed catch by Rashad Green, who almost broke free. An arm tackle, a flag is down. They got a holding call on the receiver lane, blocking in front of Green. That would have wiped it a touchdown, but Elder saved it as Green was sprinting down the sideline. Knowles have not had a major penalty tonight just one for five yards until this. There's no foul for offensive pass on first. The ball is called at the line of scrimmage. So the catch counts it's a first down at the Miami 45 yard line and very quickly. Uh, Chris what I saw Knowles are close to field goal. What range. I saw was Ramon Lane blocking downfield. <laughs> he almost tackled. The Miami Hurricane defender Ladarius Gunner. I, I, I can't believe they're right there. How is that He's not got the holding? In both hands. I, I don't, where I grew up, that's a hole.
The blitz is picked up, but now Winston takes off. A flag comes down behind the play as Winston slides at the 27. This is going to come back. This is in the holding zone. Negating a huge gain as Winston on a bum ankle maybe was a, chugging downfield. Maybe a makeup call here after that last play. Holy. Number 70 on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty where we play today. Yeah, I'm Matthias. They don't do makeup calls in football officials. You didn't do that? I don't know. I, I'm just saying that, that last call was, 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 was it, at this stage of the game with under five minutes to go, every play counts. And we expect a lot of the officials, we expect a lot out of the players. Here we go, first and 20. Winston flips it short to Cook, who's got a block. Delvin Cook takes off, tackled at the 41. The talented true freshman who scored a touchdown earlier almost got loose again. And it's the right call with an all-out blitz. Miami brought a lot of people that time, and it's just a matter of Jameis Winston baiting him, baiting him. He looked him off to the left, and at the last second dropped it off to the right. And when you put Cook out in the open field, he can make a lot of people miss. The Canes fortunate at that time to bring him down. Got 14 on first and 20. Cook again, knifing through, Dalvin Cook almost scored again before Fentress saved a touchdown, but the Knolls are really threatening. Watch the center, remember the tackle, he's now the center, watch him climb to the second level and try to help out here. This is the advantage of having the big fella in the middle now, gets a great block on Kirby and springs Cook loose. What acceleration from the true freshman. 11 yards of carry tonight for Cook. 66 in total. He's got it again. Breaking tackles again. Delvin Cook running to the end zone. And Florida State ties it up and goes in front for the first time. How about Dalvin Cook? Coming on guy, strong in the fourth quarter. A guy that was questioned. And whether or not he would be able to play, Jimbo Fisher telling everybody, latter part of the week, he's healthy. Our backs are all ready to go. Offensive line again, nice job, of initial point of attack. Left tackle does a good job of climbing up to the linebacker, but really, that's just great acceleration and vision, toughness. Cook breaks three tackles that time and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. He Back is, in his hometown. He is a real difference maker. You think of the Louisville game when they were on the road. Looked like they might be slipping. He came up with a couple big runs in that game as well. Now here they are again in the second half. They need some big plays, not just in the passing game, but the running game. And Cook comes up again with those big runs for the Knowles offense. Aguayo to make it a four-point margin. Twice the Seminoles. Trail by 16. And Miami with a missed or a blocked BAT and a missed chip shed. That's the difference right now. The Canes in a hole for the first time after Cook's second touchdown. Another reminder that Goodyear bringing you the aerial coverage, whether you're going for it from a few yards out or from miles away, go with the tire with superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. The Ford wrap up show coming up after the game with Robert Flores. Highlights and analysis of this one in a busy day on college football. Alvin Cook has been a difference maker in this second half. The Seminoles have outscored the Hurricanes 20 to 3. And now Brad Kaya, true freshman quarterback, Duke Johnson and company have 305 to try to regain the lead. Remember that Jalen Ramsey blocked a PAT in the first half. And then the freshman Michael Badgley 
Because Ramsey getting in there with that long arm. Badgley missed a 29 yarder yeah. here. The extra point and then the field goal, that's the difference in the first half. They left four points on the field, not to mention that third down carom that went up off the hands of a defensive end McCord into the waiting arms of Carlos Williams ended up being a touchdown. That's a four point play as well, Kirk. That also could be framed as the difference. Ever going to kick a field goal if that was incomplete? Instead, it's a touchdown. The Canes need to approach this obviously with 3.05 to go. Get back into that mindset of playing to win and being aggressive with how they handle their attack here offensively. Knowles rush for Kaya throws over the middle. It's Duke Johnson out of the backfield up near the 40. Excellent receiver as well as a tough runner. A nice matchup against the middle linebacker Reggie Northrup. Remember, they've had a lot of their success in the middle of the Florida State defense, whether it's against the linebackers or the safeties. That's where Kaya has tried to pick them apart, throwing the backs, tight ends, and also the receivers. 61 yards away from their first home field win over their rivals in 10 years. Johnson right side short gain. Once again the Knowles defense has played its part in a second half comeback as Johnson continues to be bothered by cramps having to dig deep here late. We, we talked about this heat being a factor. Duke is out the true freshman. You got a true freshman quarterback in that backfield and now you got a true freshman running back joining him in Joe Yearby. Yearby rather. True freshman right tackle as well. Kaya can run. Rarely does so. Slides down a couple yards short. It'll be third and two. He is a pocket quarterback, but here, you know, there were what, three Florida State defenders closing in on him. He decides to come up a little bit short, but this is where you're going to get challenged. A little bit more urgency from the true freshman. You get three timeouts. It's third and two, but they've got to pick things up here a little bit. They don't need a field goal. They need a touchdown. Right now they need two. Kaya fires. Caught. Door set. First down. Inside the nose 45. They got pressure to him, but it was soft coverage, and Ronald Darby actually lost his footing. And when he lost it, look how he's, bow he's falling back in coverage. He loses his footing, but because of the soft coverage, it gave Kaya an outlet to get the ball out. But the clock is ticking. Miami still with those three timeouts to use. In the final minute, Kaya overthrows Yearby, who came out of the backfield. The pocket was closing in around him. They've had some success this year getting Duke Johnson out of the backfield on these wheel routes. Matched up one on one with a linebacker. Duke's again, got his helmet on, Kirk. He's still on the sidelines, though. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to go with the freshman year. But, but Chris, 56 seconds, three timeouts. Even though they're across midfield, the urgency and the tempo are going to have to pick up here from Miami. Live wall for the tight end, flex to the left. He's the leading receiver. They hand it off to Yearby on a delay and an excellent tackle. Reaching in to grab an ankle there was Demarcus Walker. Quick timeout here by the by the Canes offense, still with two remaining. Yearby was taken off and Walker reached up and grabbed him, so it's third and nine. Tune in Tuesday night to see how the 12 member selection committee processes the results of the weekend at SEC West Showdown. Ohio State's win at Minnesota. Sun Devils are in a battle in Corvallis. Down 14 to 3 early in that one out in Corvallis. And Florida State, do they need it to win to keep playoff hopes alive? Or could a one loss Florida State team get in that bracket? I think they're going to have to win out playing in the ACC and the fact that they have been so close so many times. I think they realize that as well. Can't say enough though, Chris. I mean, so many people question the Knowles. So many people question Jameis Winston, some of his decision making on and off the field. One thing we've learned about this Florida State team is they're resilient. They, they don't give up no matter how bad things look. Here comes Jalen Ramsey. Kings need nine. Play action. Kaya steps up, but Ramsey got his hand on the ball again. And it's fourth and nine. 
And he was coming. He was creeping. He's been blitzing. And he's just going to come in here and then come in. Now, what you got to be able to recognize is the quarterback's got to feel that. Again, let's give him a little bit of credit. Cut him some slack. He's a true freshman. This is the biggest moment he's ever played in his life. And you wonder if the ball was actually out of his hand before his hand started to come free. They're not reviewing it. But the play comes down to this the game on the line on fourth and nine. Play clock is winding down to five. Miami may need to spend a timeout here. And now Golden just called it. So, in a dead ball situation, they have to burn the timeout. But this is the ball game. And Ramsey has found the way after halftime to lead by example. He's been all over the place, getting his hands and his arms in the way of passes, and both Chris, in front of receivers and out of the quarterback's hand. And you're probably going to see him coming from a blitz. Either they're going to bring the blitz from Ramsey or you bring it from the corner P.J. Williams but they're going to try to put a lot of pressure here on the freshman as much as they can. And I think if, if you're Miami here you got to have some pre snap movement and try to find a way to get Clive Clive Wolford the tight end isolated against a linebacker you, you, you move him with the pre snap try to figure out if they're in zone or they're in man try to create some confusion and they've had some success with the tight end on those seam routes right between the linebackers and the safeties if you're Miami it's worked all night why not try it again with the game on a line it's right here at the top there's the motion Florida State's going to call a timeout. So Charles Kelly wanted to take a look at what Miami would show on the biggest play of the game so far and is this another close call survived by Florida State it's been the pattern all season long once again a slow start fell down 16 nothing it was also 23 7 but it's been a 20 to 3 margin after halftime as the pattern just repeats say, again you can say whatever you want about this team they, they to me they've almost become the Darth Vader or the villain of the of the playoff. You know when you talk to people outside of Tallahassee it's like everybody outside of Florida State is pulling for Florida State to lose and they feed off of that doubt. They feed off of people questioning them and again tonight in the rivalry game they get down early. It didn't look good. They've kept their cool given themselves a chance. I think it's a combination of that heart and fire along with Miami being pretty conservative in this second half. Look for the tight end here 46 Walford in my opinion over the middle try to get him matched up against the linebacker. Kaya steps up delivers over the middle intercepted by who else but Jalen Ramsey who slides down to the 16 and the Knowles streak is going to stretch to 26 in a row. He has been a monster in the second half Ramsey. Well as much as we talk about Jameis Winston tonight Jalen Ramsey has been growing with this defense. He's become the LaMarcus Joyner and the Telvin Smith of this unit the leadership the intangibles tonight he stepped up big from the beginning of the game all the way to the last play where he comes up with the interception. And Kaya's first interception of the night on his final pass attempt such a spectacular start for the young quarterback big plays coming in bunches in the first half Duke Johnson not able to be out there for Miami's final drive as he was cramping up you can see Nate Andrews right there tries to take away the tight end goes with him at the line of scrimmage and that play did not have a chance I really believe that he wanted to try to get it to Clive Walford but the call here by Charles Kelly they walked Nate Andrews the safety up to the line of scrimmage to jam him and make him work to get to his route instead of a linebacker which was a great call and he had to just take a chance throw it up in the middle into triple coverage and Jalen Ramsey comes up with the interception gets a hug from a former teammate Terrence Brooks. Well another battle between old rivals to join the long list of entertaining games 
We'll see Brad Kite and more of these in his career. Not able to seal the deal against the Seminoles. Many have tried. No one has succeeded in this win streak. Uh, but Brad Kaya is a future star. Miami's program with Al Golden is heading in a great direction. Jimbo they, Fisher and, and James Coley yep. sharing a hug. Of course, they've coached together at LSU and FSU. Canes are eliminated. There'll be no rematch. They lose here and lose a chance to win the ACC Coastal. Fisher's team earlier today clinching the Atlantic Division title but staying on course not just for the conference championship game again but the 14 playoff down to Heather Chris thanks so much Jimbo the streak continues 26 in a row how would you describe this team's will to win they do they love each other and it gets down to that they play for each other they don't panic and this is a heck of a Miami football team give them credit they are very skilled very good team but our kids just execute when they have to great poise and great great camaraderie at one point you trailed 23 to 7 how did you turn it around we just kept our poise and kept playing the next play and we got it back to two possession game into one possession game and kept our poise and kept them to field goals there at the end and you know Dalvin Cook and those guys made some big plays and we had some critical turnovers in the game to give Miami credit they, they forced them coach what makes you continue to believe that when your team is fighting from behind that it is going to win no matter what because I know those guys I work I live with them every day we love trust and believe in each other and uh, just the way we do things at Florida State. And coach, you made a gutsy move retooling the O-line before the game started. How did that pay off for you? Really did. I thought Cam played a heck of a game up there. Big Rod Johnson playing left tackle. Man, what, how about that as a true freshman getting his first start down there against Miami? But we thought that's what we had to do to go where we want to go with this football team and, and try to win the whole thing. And how would you describe your reaction when you saw Jalen Ramsey come away with that final pick after the night he had? Exhilaration. Now that was that was class. That was like Dion in the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> and then back in back in 89, that was pretty big. Go celebrate with your team. Thanks, Jimbo. Bye -bye. Check the play by Ramsey here. This is the pick to go with a forced fumble, a block BAT, four passes broken up, three tackles, one tackle for loss. That's all number eight <laughs> did tonight for the seven. You know, again, when you play that position, you're going to be in an, have opportunities to make plays. They blitzed him all night as well. He had a bunch of hurries to yep. go along with the rest of those stats. So Florida State had already clinched the Atlantic with Clemson's loss at Georgia Tech today. Georgia Tech is finished in the ACC at six and two. Duke's got a couple of games left. Miami is eliminated. And Duke has the the, the uh, tiebreaker with Georgia Tech yep. because they beat them head to head. So you're going to have to see a possible Duke loss to get Georgia Tech into the uh, into the championship game. Gutsy, heart, all the things you talked about. Also very, very fortunate. You look at Tyreek McCord batting a pass down on third and ten. Would have set up a field goal attempt. Instead, the ball pops up into the hands of Carlos Williams, who waltzes into the end zone. Ended up being a four-point difference in that. And that's, of course, the final margin here. Again, we, we have talked all year about this, this team. It's very different from who they were a year ago when they just blew people out. They were up 35 to nothing at the end of the first quarter against a lot of teams. They've got a new identity. They've got a leader on one side with Jameis Winston, Jalen Ramsey on the other side. They just won't be denied. They find ways to believe in each other and win games. They stay alive. No one's been able to put away the Seminoles and win their 26 in a row from 16 down twice here. Our thanks to Mark Evett, Mike Black, Darren Brown at the booth. Today's game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Eric Mumbley. For Kirk and Heather, Chris Fowler saying good light from Miami as Winston tries to hush the Hurricanes crowd. The Knowles survive again, 30-26. Time for the Ford wrap-up show. Let's go to Crystal.